Remember the name George Mendes. He is not called super agent for nothing. Guys, what a genius of a man. I will tell you, if Manchester United signs Manuel Ugate, guys, you all have got to take a bow for George Mendes. What a man. You know what? If Man United go ahead to sign uh, Manuel Ugate, I, if God willing I get a son, my next son will be called Kobe Mendes. I've got to tap into this greatness. I mean, listen, this guy is a genius. He has cracked the code as it seems, as it seems to be advanced now as Man United ages closer to signing Manuel Ugarte just after this man took the flight from Portugal, not to just enjoy holiday to just have time to west and you know just go out talking and moving around all over vagabonding around manchester he came with a master plan that seems to be getting us closer to signing the number six we've been dreaming of welcome to the united of sport my name is webb like share and subscribe and let me tell you the details as they are concerning manuel ugate and manchester united but the man himself, the man of the hour, the man of the moment should be George Mendes, the super agent. No wonder this is the guy in charge of the biggest footballers in the world. Paris Saint-Germain trusted him to come and negotiate not only for his player, but for the club as well. So listen, here is what we get. These are my sources and this is what they say. I've got no reason to doubt it. So you probably heard by now that... Uh, Man United and PSG are contemplating a swap deal involving Manuel Ugarte and uh, Jadon Sancho. Now, it's not like it's magic that no one could have thought about it, you know. But let me give you the details. This is where the genius is. Now, listen, PSG seem to want a lot of money for Manuel Ugarte. They are holding out for about 51 million pounds. Man United are saying, we don't have that. We can only pay no more than 35 million. Now, what George Mendes seems to have suggested to Man United and both parties. He's saying, okay, look, if you all want the players, the players want to join the respective clubs. But Manuel Ugarte is desperate to join Man United. He's waiting. He's saying, he told his agent, please make it happen. Meanwhile, Jadon Sancho wants an exit out of Man United. It's not all done and dusted. Don't you be fooled around. I've told you before, they are only being professional. But Jadon Sancho wants out. He has already agreed personal terms with Paris Saint-Germain and is okay playing in PSG. Now, PSG also want him. So what George Mendes has come with is, is this. This is the master plan. The master plan. He has said, okay, you both want uh, you know, players, but you still want money. Th this is what you're going to do. You go into a swap deal where Manchester United pays for Manuel Ugarte on a reduced fee by PSG. PSG takes Jadon Sancho on loan, but with an obligation to buy him. Now, it's not just that. You should be saying, okay, what's that? That's normal. We've had that before. I mean, they did the same with uh, so many other players. No, this, this is the catch. But remember, Man United valued Sancho at about £40 million. Pounds. Now, that's still on the high side for PSG. So what this super agent, the genius, has, say, has suggested is that the obligation to buy be at a reduced cost as well. So, whereas PSG won't be getting the benefits now, they will be getting them later when they have to pay for Jadon Sancho, but on a reduced cost, just to compensate the deduction they have made on Manuel Ugarte. So, it's a win-win situation. PSG get the winger they want in Jadon Sancho. Man United get the number six in Manuel Ugarte. Man United pay some cash, which they have, which they can afford according to the PSR rules. PSG get some money. Man United lose a player they didn't want, but they valued this player at some money. After one season, Man United get some money from that player, which money they can still use to pay off for players like Mathis Dillit, with whom they have negotiated paying terms that will see them pay in installments over three years. Guys, isn't that genius? <laughs> George Mendes, the super agent. Guys, I tell you what, you pray. We should pray to the ban above to give us smart kids because, I mean, these two clubs were going back and forth. Before, I don't think we had the people who have had the competence of negotiating something like that. So where it is now, it looks to be almost progressing. So what is going to happen next? A report is going to be taken back to Paris Saint-Germain 
and it is now them to proceed and invite Man United to make the formal bid for Manuel Ugarte. And trust you me, that could take seconds because Man United is ready. They have been ready for the longest time to put in that former bid for the number six they want. Listen, Ugarte is back on track thanks to George Mendes. Let's wait and see unless something changes and I'm not saying it is done because PSG has got to agree first. It's now all dependent on PSG. George Mendes, who they had uh, trusted uh, to, to represent them, seems to have reached some an, a, a same agreement because he also wants to eat some of that commission because uh, he knows because he will certainly eat uh, a, a, a good commission from Ugate if we paid about 30 million or 35 million pounds for him. He would go, make some good commission to add on the so much he has already eaten on Joao Neves and all the other players, Pedro Neto and all the other players he has signed, the Joao Felixes that he's going to sign uh, or, or, or to, to sell. But he could also make some money from PSG of you know, negotiating the deal that could see them earn money from uh, the sale of uh, the, the, the from the sale of Jed, of the rather from, from Jadon Sancho so it's 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 a, a very uh, interesting scenario so we are just waiting to see what the progress will be like but Manuel Ugarte for now with all the authority vested in me I can say he is back on track he is back on track and four more steps might be taken soon man this is what you want to see in a summer like this. And the beauty is uh, we've got a good relationship with George Mendes. Uh, we've got, uh, I think, uh, a certain uh, re relationship because he was seen, by the way, before even the start of the summer, he was seen around Carrington driving in and out, cars branded with guest field and what. I think he has got offices in uh, Manchester, probably, or in, in, in the UK. So his cars were seen entering and leaving. Carrington, you know, he was negotiating deals before. It was hoped that he was negotiating for Joao Neves because United were linked with him before, but it turned out it was several other players, including Lenny Yoro, who is also his a, a player. Listen, this is exactly what we have been hoping for, waiting for, seeing some progress. And for me, like I've been telling you, that this is the crucial week where we wanted to see. Uh, something happened, some progress, some, uh, some sensible, you know, uh, developments concerning uh, 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 players like, uh, uh, like, like Ugarte, a player we want. So it's, a, it's, it's an amazing, I mean, a, a time to be a Man United player, uh, a, a rather a Man United uh, supporter, because you see things happening in the, in the right direction, at the right uh, pace, and, you know, you, that's what you love to see. It, it's something you love to see. Uh, so that's where we are, guys. It is, I think, a beautiful update. It's on this same day that our captain Bruno Fernandes has put pen to his paper uh, of the contract until 2027 with an option of, of a further one year. That's four years, three, three uh, rather three in, uh, in, in, of course, uh, in, in principle and uh, an option of a further one a year. Uh, then we also expect, uh, of course, more talks to go on with other players in terms of contracts. So it is really going to be a busy and settled and calm season for Manchester United, considering how things are, 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 are unfolding. I've seen people complaining about Eric Ten Hag and signing so many uh, Dutch players or players who, plays in, who, who played in the Dutch league before. And somehow people are trying to make that a point now. We, we were desperate for signings now that we made the signings. Uh, now people are saying we are signing only players who have worked with Eric Ten Hag. And I'm thinking, Guys, look, what do you expect from a man who is under pressure to change the way this team has been playing, the bogus way we've been playing for years? He's under pressure to do it in two years. Do you think he has the time to get players he has never tested and try to teach them how to press, to, uh, uh, to play that high press, how to pass the ball, to be proactive and build from the back? It doesn't take just a year. You need players who have done it before if you have short timelines to work with. He tried to do it for two years with that bunch of nobodies that we had, and they failed. So what is wrong with him getting players who have done it before? Better the devil you know than the angel you don't. So for me, I don't have any issues with Eric Ten Hag signing or Man United signing for the boss Eric Ten Hag, players he has worked with before, because if they are going to get us playing the way we want him to play first, that's what we want. We don't have time, time to waste. But people are trying to make that an issue. Da, 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 da. Well, who says that because you played under Eric Ten Hag, you cannot play for him again? Hmm? 
I don't know, guys, let's, let's just, just be uh, open-minded. I mean, some moves did not work, certainly. Some players he signed, he, he signed did, did not work. Some have worked wonders. Anthony failed, but Lisandro Martinez performed, didn't he? So we cannot just, uh, say, all, some of you are, all are saying Amrabat should be back. Yeah? Weghorst came and some of you are quite impressed by him. So it's, uh, it's, I think for me, it's, 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 it's no point. There's no point in us going back and forth about Eric Ten Hag and your players he worked with before. Even if it were you as the boss and you have two years to make it happen, you would rather go back to your trusted generals first or first because you know you won't need a lot of time to help them play because they already know what you want. That's what these two players said, Mathis Dirit and Nusal Mazraoui. They said they know how he wants to play and what he expects from his players. Simple. So meaning... There is not so much work to do on them, yet they play in the core positions and departments that initiate the style he wants to play. So guys, focus on the season. It's the penultimate day of the big game, the season opener, Man United against Fulham. Let's focus on the play, not on who is playing and where they played before. Guys, style up, man. If you are one of those, that's not the energy we want to take into the new season, honestly. It's not. My name is Webb. This is the United Sport. Like, share, and subscribe. Kobe Mendez Sebachije. That would be a cool name for my son. <laughs> Cheers.